All right, uh, so I hope you can see. Is this good enough? Uh, it's a bit, uh, I do apologize, but we'll have to start, I suppose. We are already behind schedule here, so. Hmm. All right, uh, so my name's, uh, mm, someone is smart here, right? This COVID thing is quite serious, yeah? We must social distance, clearly people are not taking this seriously. No, I know I, it, it, it's, it's a serious thing, you know, so we, we should take this very seriously. We're not social distancing, are we? Oh, okay. Can you see? I wonder if, uh, you know, he was, he's gifted or something. But okay, that's fine. Uh, so my name is uh, Lighton Piri, right? Uh, I'll, I'll be taking you in, uh, just come in, sir. I'll be taking you in uh, EDU, I'm oh, sorry, uh, ICT, um, ICT 1110. Um, so, you know, we, we're going to work together beginning today all the way up to, I think it's some, sometime in December or something when you normally write the exams, the final exams. Um, so today's session is ideally supposed to be just uh, administrative, ideally. I don't think we'll have enough time to look at uh, course overview, so the different modules and topics are, are going to be covered in the course. Um, we'll discuss that tomorrow. Um, and then we'll continue off uh, on Saturday. Apparently there's supposed to be class on Saturday or something. I don't know how that works, but um, all right. So I know I attended, I was around for the orientation, right, the other day, just briefly. Uh, but I'm sure Ms. Mrs. Duck or something, she's the one who's normally in charge, with, uh, in charge of uh, uh, orientation. I'm sure they, she alongside uh, the other members of staff explained all there is to know about, um, I don't know if UNSA or maybe the department as a whole, the school and the department as a whole. Um, but nonetheless, welcome to UNSA, right? Despite the circumstances, I know it's, uh, it's very strange. I'm wondering how life must be like getting to campus when the senior students are not around, right? <laughs> I don't know, uh, I've never experienced that. I was a student myself at UNSA many, many years ago, and uh, the senior students were around, but life happens. Um, so uh, just to give you a sneak preview of uh, how uh, ICT 1110 fits into the bigger picture here, just showing you the uh, different causes associated with uh, the program that you're pursuing, right? Uh, the Bachelor of uh, Information and Communication Technologies with Education. Um, we are here, right? I guess level one or something. So year number one, year number two, year number three, year number four, um, I've deliberately omitted uh, courses from your uh, respective minors because there are quite a number of them, right? So replace everything where there's a minor with uh, your respective minors. So it would be math, something, maybe civic education, religious education, history, or I don't know what else is there, right? Uh, how many math ma majors? Okay. Um, all right. C civic education, religious education. I'm wondering why civic education is almost always popular, right? <laughs> I don't know what's happening here, but why, why did you choose civic education? I'm sorry? Oh, who, who said that? Oh, okay. I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, Madame's not best, so I'm sure she don't know. All right. Um, doesn't matter. It's always wise to, to pick something you're interested in, right? You're in it for the long haul. So you want to make sure that uh, you pick something that you know is going to be interesting, something that's going to excite you for the next four years. But maybe it's too late. I don't know. Uh, so, right. So we are here, right? I just wanted to mention that um, that uh, the other, I guess the other course that you want to pay particular attention to insofar as 1110 is concerned is EDU 1020 because it turns out that some of the things we're going to be discussing are going to, um, to be based on the assumption that uh, some fundamental or building blocks have already been discussed in EDU 1020, right? So uh, you want to pay particular attention to Mr. Mwalimu's course here, right? Um, we, we have uh, 
a number of activities associated with the cause, right? Uh, so the obvious ones is sessions such as this one, which is a normal lecture session. We're supposed to have three lecture sessions per week, right? Ideally, so the, the program document, if you read through the program document, it says that uh, uh, lecture sessions are supposed to be, you're supposed to be entitled to three hours worth of lecture sessions um, every week. Uh, but ideally, lecture sessions are for five minutes long, right? Like under normal circumstances, you want to have enough time to transition to the next lecture that you're attending, right? So usually we stop after for five minutes or something. Today is different though. I don't think anyone is going anywhere, right? Do you have class afterwards? I don't think so. Um, I don't either, right? So, uh, but also, uh, there's meant to be lab sessions or laboratory sessions or tutorial sessions. Um, and the idea behind the tutorial sessions is um, you, you have someone who helps you understand things that you are unable to pick up in the normal traditional lecture sessions. Uh, so let's say we have this 45 minute long session and there's some things that are a bit complex for you to understand. You go out there and you read and you still don't understand. Um, the idea of tutorial sessions, you're supposed to attend these sessions and ask questions. Seek clarification until you understand the concept. Um, usually the approach we take is we create problem sets, right? So they're predefined questions that you work through together with the tutors. Um, then the other important activity here is assessments, right? So we have three core assessments here. Uh, quiz, quizzes, um, historically we've had quizzes almost every week, but because of what's happening, the plan is, and I talk about this, uh, I think in the next coming slides, but the plan is to, to have uh, a quiz session after every major topic covered. So instead of the normal 20, we normally have, uh, in the past we've, we've had 20, 20 quizzes, right? So we write like 20 quizzes, but we're probably going to write about half, maybe less actually, uh, because of what's going on, right? Um, and then we also have uh, class theory tests. Um, again, usually under normal circumstances, you know, you, you have an hour, maybe less, to, to sit in a venue such as this one, and then you answer a few questions, right? Uh, it's going to be different this year, I think, because uh, of what's happening. It's likely we'll have uh, a major test before you leave in April. I'm told you're supposed to leave in April, right? Um, but before you leave, we'll probably have one major test, and then we'll have another test um, towards the end of the year, right? So it'll be like in term two or something. Uh, if we decide to have additional tests, we'll probably We'll probably discuss that as, 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 as a class or something. And then there's a final exam. Um, because this is a full year course, right? So you take it, um, the two, two terms or two semesters, um, you write it towards the end of the year. So sometime in December. Uh, and in fact, even if this were a half course, you'd probably write it towards the end of the year because of what's happening. That's what happened last, I think that's what happened last, last year. I think so. I think everybody wrote the exams towards the end of the year, irrespective of whether it was a half course or a full course. So a half course normally spans one term, um, and then a full course uh, is covered throughout the year, the academic year. Right? Uh, feel free to stop me or uh, ask questions if you want to. There's nothing like we're waiting until the end, at least before this session. So if you have questions, just and then ask, right? Um, if if you're wondering if, if there's any recommendations with regards to uh, textbooks associated with the course, there's, there's a few um, prescribed and recommended textbooks. Um, so there's a, I'm wondering which, which, this will be shared later on, I guess, I don't know. Uh, I think they're already on the Moodle, actually. Right, so there's a computer, computer architecture qualitative approach, right? Um, now, so part of the reason why, why these things are being presented to you is because the, the slides, the lecture slides for the most part are, uh, or at least are in part based on some of these resources. Uh, in fact, what, what tends to happen is towards the, e towards the end of each um, slide deck, like this one, you'll find uh, um, a slide tagged as bibliography, which will have a list of resources. Um, that we are used to derive the lecture slides, right? Um, but uh, one of the textbooks we're using is uh, Computer Architecture, a Qualitative Approach, fifth edition. It's Computer Organization and Architecture, so Designing pe pe for Performance. Again, uh, some of these are only going to be applicable for the first half of the, um, of, of the year, of the course, uh, when we nominally cover 
computer systems, and, and then some textbooks are only applicable next term when we look at the computer architecture part of the course. All right, so uh, computer organization and architecture, uh, I think we, we use this in, in both terms of the computer systems and the computer architecture components. Um, this is going to be tremendously useful if, if you have access to these resources. You probably want to look into introduction to computers by uh, P. Norton, Peter Norton. Um, tremendously useful for the first half of the year, the first half of the course. And then finally, uh, there's a MIPS, MIPS assembly language programming using Qt Spim. Um, I'm very particular about the, the version here because when we start looking at uh, the computer, when we start looking at uh, MIPS assembler programming next term, uh, most of what we discuss is actually based on this, this particular book. We want to pay particular attention to the version, right? So make sure that you gain access to the 2019 version or version 1.1.5 um, This is freely available actually. Um, um, and then certain, certain topics will involve us uh, uh, working with certain software tools or toolkits or packages. Um, the major ones that we use or that we tend to use in the course are the ones listed here. So a hypervisor called VirtualBox. Um, the operating system that we always use is Ubuntu. Uh, this time around we're using version 20.04, .20 right? Um, and then when we start looking at MIPS assembler, we, we get to use a, a simulator called Qt Spim. Uh, we rarely get to use Logism. I, I don't know what's going to happen this year, but hopefully we can, maybe not. But if we do get to the stage where we still have enough time towards the end, um, we get to uh, uh, use Logism to try and design circuitry. Right? All right. Uh, but these things will be reintroduced to us as we're covering the various topics that, um, I'm wondering if this is the issue. Can you still hear me if I cover my mouth? Hmm, okay. This is a, take a chance here, right? COVID. Um, yeah, it's not a joke, right? I, a few, few weeks ago, I was uh, attending an event. Uh, it was work, right? And, I was with this, this person, um, I mean, a few days after we arrived, sorry about that, a few days after we, we arrived, uh, I don't know if people haven't realized that I've started working now, uh, I was on leave, but I'm back. Uh, a few days after they died, right? That's the fiction, the same COVID-19. This thing is serious, that's what I'm trying to say. We should take it seriously. Although they say it doesn't affect uh, youngsters, I suppose, I don't know. Very sad. Doesn't affect them as much as uh, the elderly. Yeah, moment of silence. Is that what they say? I don't know. But um, anyways, <laughs> so no, but it's serious. They died, right? It's not a. It's true. They they're gone now. Uh, so in, in terms of the course resources, right? Um, so everything that all the course resources will be made available via the learning management system that the UNSAs adopted the one of uh, three learning management systems that the UNSAs decided to adopt, right? Uh, I think for undergraduates, um, or the regular mode of instruction for undergraduate students, is, it's a, a software package called Moodle, right? Um, I've noticed some of you have already started logging into the platform, which is a good thing. Um, I did notice that uh, quite, not quite a number of you, but I think most uh, half a dozen or so uh, logged on, and I'm sure they were surprised that there was no activity there, right? Uh, or maybe you found old content from last year or the year before or something. Uh, but you should be able to find uh, newer content now, right? So the, the site has been reset. Uh, so everything will be shared via the Moodle, right? Including all the slide decks, like, like this thing that you're seeing right now. So if you need to gain access to these slides, uh, you have to log into the Moodle and then you just download the slides. We we'll talk more about this just now. Um, so it's quite easy, you just log in with your credentials. Same credentials as, as the ones you use to log in to SIS. Uh, once you log in, you see something similar to this. It's a dashboard, and then you obviously click the ICT 1110 computer systems and architecture. 2020 slash 2021, right? Which I don't think you have access to any other ICT 1110 other than this one. Right? So you click that, and then you have access to this, um, this page here. Now this page, this landing page for ICT 1110 will give you access to everything you need, right? So 
like I said, the slide decks, lecture slides, um, recorded sessions, unless this is, I hope this is not going to be one of those botched sessions which fails, right? If it doesn't fail, it would be uploaded also. And the reason we do this is, uh, well, we're trying to see if we can reuse some of the data here, but, but we found it tremendously useful last year when we went completely online. Um, the reason it was useful is because we had certain individuals that were unable to attend live online sessions. Perhaps because of load shedding, maybe because they didn't have bundles or something. So the idea of making available the recorded screencast is to enable individuals that may not be able to attend the session to consume the lecture afterwards. I'm sure there are people that haven't attended today or something, I don't know. Uh, so you have access to the slide decks, uh, lecture slides or notes as they call them. Um, so what you notice is there's a one up and four up. The one up is uh, something that's similar to what, what is being presented right now. And then the four up is, is, is provided in the event that you want to print this out. So you have like um, four slides on one page to help you out with, uh, is it uh, potentially how much money you're going to spend printing if you want to print, right? But nobody prints anymore, I think. I don't know. Uh, I've stopped printing now. In the past we would, uh, sorry. In the past we would, uh, would actually print out the syllabus and uh, the syllabus at least on the first day of, of class like this one, but but we think that uh, it's a complete waste of paper, right? And uh, resources and the trees also. So these will be available in the Moodle. Everybody, and most of you have access to smartphones, so you need to download this and consume it on your smartphone, right? It's good, you want to get used, you want to get into the habit of, of consuming digital content, because it's not going away anytime soon. It's here to stay. Um, so besides the slide decks, you also have access to the screencast, like I said, so these things can be consumed right within the learning management system itself, right, like so. Um, but because of how we, we upload the, the screencasts, we upload them on YouTube and then we just share links here. You can also uh, access the link and consume the link via YouTube if you want to or something. I don't know why you want to do that, but there's that um, option. Um, tried last year to tell these guys that um, uh, what you want to do is, because the sessions are long, right? Imagine this session we're having right now for five minutes, maybe one hour. Um, we can crowdsource, right? We can make use of you so that we, we tag the different, the different timelines in the slide. So that if you want to revisit and play back the recording, you don't have to consume the entire lecture session. You can just stick to the point of interest. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen these videos that have timelines, right? No? Yeah, well, so I'm, I'm mentioning this because uh, I think it would be nice if we get into the habit of doing this ourselves early on in the process. Believe me, this is going to be, this is for your own good, actually. So what I mean is, um, what I mean is, uh, if I can just, uh, Showcase something here. Still have time, I think. And I know I have. I know I have. Uh, I hope the person who was calling didn't think that I was ignoring them. Right? Normally people start spreading. No, he doesn't pick up my calls. But how's that work, right? I don't know what they say here. Um, have you guys started accessing Edgerom yet? Uh, the internet access. You, you... Okay, yeah. I, I, I don't. I was asking because I wanted to find out if there's reception in here. Uh, I have to connect to my phone right now. So there's Edgerom, right? Everybody has access to Edgerom. High speed internet connection, they say. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can get to the... 
So what, what, I, what I mean, I was trying to get to a video that has uh, the timeline. What I mean is uh, if you have uh, a video such as this one, um, you, can, you can tag it, right? Uh, and you can actually see the chapters uh, as you're watching the video. I think you've seen this in YouTube. You see how the first chapter here is Moodle API documentation, and then the second chapter is, sorry, the second chapter is uh, Moodle Sandbox for testing, uh, about Sandbox with Moodle.net, and then getting access tokens. And so this is possible if, as, if, if you tag the video like so. So you specify that between between the first second all the way up to the first minute or something, what was being discussed was uh, uh, how videos are shared in ICT 1110, right? So you would, you would ideally tag, you'd ideally tag the entire recording, like this one if we record for about an hour, you tag it so that you specify the key points being discussed. And then later on when you're consuming this, you just go to the point of interest. So like in this case, I don't have to watch this from the beginning, and you just say, I want to start with how to get an access token, and then I'll, I'll go to that point in time, right? But this is only possible if people actually do this, and by people, it's you, right? But it's fine if you don't want to do this, that's okay. Um, it'd be nice, though, I suppose, I don't know. Uh, all right, so that's the videos. But also, once we go completely online, beyond April 4th, I don't know when you're going back. When are you going back home? Sorry? <laughs> no, no, we are serious here, right? We are trying to be serious. This is a serious thing we are discussing here. I don't know if you figured out that this is serious. Um, so once we go completely online, what you notice is that when, when we use uh, um, platforms endorsed by the University of Zambia, uh, in our case, we almost always use Google Meet. When you use Google Meet, um, Besides the video, when you record the session, besides the video itself, the screencast, what you also record is a chat transcript. So if there's um, a dialogue, some sort of dialogue happening uh, online, maybe you're chatting and communicating or sharing ideas as the lecture is going on, all of that is recorded as well. So those things will be shared like so, will be tagged as chat transcript, right? And so what you have access to is uh, a dialogue such as this one for each lecture session. And this is good, really, right? You want to get into the habit of of having these conversations as the lecture is going on, right? Uh, not just a joke when, when the session is in progress. I'm not sure if this is a useful dialogue. This is from lecture series number 12, I believe. I don't know, yeah. Uh, I think people are wondering if I was online because they couldn't hear me or something. He isn't breaking, I don't know. Um, and then the other resource that's accessible via the, the learning management system is obviously assessments, um, especially now that uh, beyond April actually, uh, or some assessments, some assessments during now and April before you leave, some of them might be made available online so that you get used to uh, consuming these resources online, right? And in fact, the plan is to maybe have a, um, physical contact or physical sessions, face-to-face -face sessions twice in a week. And then the third session, I want to insist that we, we, we have this online so that by the time we are leaving in April, we get used to um, interacting online. I think we don't have enough time. We have like a month and, and, and a few weeks, maybe a month and a week or something. Um, so you also have access to uh, assessments, like I said, uh, for instance, quizzes. Um, usually, not usually, actually, these are timed. In fact, even the, 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 the quizzes that you'd write in a session such as this one would be timed. Um, in the past, uh, for, uh, for quizzes written uh, within, in a classroom environment like this one, these are normally uh, 10 minutes in duration, just a few questions. Um, but but for, for the ones that are administered online, we, we add a few extra minutes because, you know, people need time to submit the, their solutions uh, or their attempts. Uh, some people normally have connectivity issues, so the idea is to give you some sort of grace period um, to submit your attempt. All right, um, so I noticed when I asked if people have already started accessing the Moodle, some people were a bit uncertain or said no. Uh, what we will do is we'll make an attempt to make these resources available publicly also. 
maybe through the uh, instructor's web page uh, or maybe via Google, um, Google Drive or something. Uh, we'll see how this goes. But uh, until, until we have most of you um, able to access the Moodle, we'll, we'll make available the lecture notes publicly uh, also. Um, all right, uh, but besides, besides the resources that you find on the Moodle, um, what we've also done in the past is uh, for some, if not all of the topics, the major topics that we, we cover, there's usually YouTube playlists that are created for you. Uh, so this is content that is generated by other people out there, other smart people out there. Um, maybe to help clarify certain concepts that, that we feel students might, might struggle with. Uh, so what you want to do is, uh, I know we normally share this not within the Moodle itself, but uh, if, you, if you go to the instructor's YouTube channel, I suppose, I think it's this. I think it should be this. If you, yeah. if you go to the instructor's YouTube channel, you'll find, uh, you'll find a playlist. Actually, it's, it's, if you go to the home page of this person, you will find that uh, he's organized these things in a certain way. Uh, so if you look at these sections, one of the sections is called teaching and learning, live recording screencasts and companion playlists. Um, so some of these places, there's a combination of different courses that, are, that, that, that I, I, I coordinate or I co-teach. Uh, so you want to be on the lookout for anything that's tagged as ICT 1110. Um, and specifically, so for the recordings like this one, it will be, be placed in, in a 2020 slash 2021 ICT 1110 screencast. Uh, the companion um, videos though, the companion videos though will be uh, tagged like, uh, I'm trying to find an example. Hmm. I'm wondering why this is not, um, Right, so a classic example is if you look at this, right? Web resources, 2018-19, uh, ICT-1110, computer software. So what this means is that the, feed, the five videos that you find in here, these are not created by me, but they're collated, right? Um, they're from different sources. Um, and so if, if you want to understand computer software further, in addition to the materials that you will find online yourself, right? Companion resources, you can go through this uh, uh, playlist. Um, I've tried to organize them into topics. Um, so, yeah, subscribe, right? Or, or is it bookmark the URL to my YouTube channel or something? Um, in certain instances, uh, we, in most instances, we actually make available these large files like uh, uh, software tools that we use. Um, we will be making them available via either Google Drive or via the instructor's web profile. Uh, so I showcased uh, this here, all the way up to here, right? Um, you can access to this.unza.zm tiled, uh, like so. Um, so you have access to, to uh, So that would be the, uh, this is, but all of these things, uh, so this is the, the web, web, web page I was talking about. It's a website, it's a web page really. I mean, I guess a website, I don't know. But um, all of these things uh, will be made available. Like if we, we, if we have shared a particular piece of software, uh, you will be provided with a direct link to the tool itself. But it's always nice to bookmark some of these uh, these, these main URLs that I'm talking about, right? YouTube channels, Moodle, um, that's bookmark a direct link to the Moodle site for this course, right? If you want to, it's always nice to just go to the direct link, right? Um, all right, and then, um, I don't know if there are any questions so far, no? And then in terms of uh, course gradings, <laughs> do you have questions? Okay. Um, yeah, we, we just, uh, it's, we haven't started looking at the course, just chatting about, uh, about administrivia here. Need stuff that you need to know about the course. 
So in terms of course grading, right, like I said, three main assessment items, quizzes, tests, um, and the final exam. The distribution is as follows. The continuous assessment, the so-called CA, accounts for 50% 50, 50 of the course grade. The other 50% is um, directed towards the final exam. The 50% um, uh, associated with the CA is broken down into two main components. Uh, quizzes, uh, this is in, in class and online quizzes, and class theory tests. The quizzes account for 20% of the overall course grade. The tests account for 30% of the overall um, course grade. In the past, when we wrote 20 quizzes, ideally it was 1% per quiz, right? Um, and in the past, we'd write four, four tests, it was 7.5% uh, uh, for each test. But because we're going to write two tests, means that each test will account for 15%. Ideally, if we write more tests, what we're saying is that the 30% will be evenly distributed um, amongst the different tests that we're going to write. So even if we write five tests or six tests, right, they are all out of 30%. Account for 30% of the overall course grade. Um, all right, so quizzes, again, if they're online, this is what you typically see on the Moodle, right? Uh, plan ahead, right? Always nice to plan ahead uh, because they're timed, right? Uh, last year would, oh wow, this was 20, 20 minutes, right? Uh, so you have 20 minutes and the timer kicks in and then you answer the questions and then, you know, you submit your attempt and then we're done. Um, there is meant to be a departmental-wide training session on how to use the Moodle. I do encourage you to attend those sessions once they are organized. Uh, I'm not involved with any of that. Um, uh, you will be communicated to once, uh, once the training sessions have been confirmed, with specifics of when and where the training will be held. Uh, you want to attend these sessions, I assure you, right? Um, so so the, the, the test itself will be, the online test will more or less be similar, the only difference is like, the, time, right? Um, so you probably have 40 instead of 20 minutes, maybe an hour instead of, instead of um, 20 minutes here. Um, and then finally, towards the end of the year, you'll get to sit somewhere in the sports hall. Uh, where are we in the sports hall? Uh, I think demography lecture theater. The supplementary exams and the deferred exams were in the sports hall though. So you sit there for three hours and then you answer um, questions that are based on everything covered in the course. Uh, an example here of uh, someone who did uh, reasonably well in the final exam. They shall remain anonymous. All right. Um, so, so over, I mean, just putting everything together here in terms of the grading, um, what you notice is that, uh, I guess, this is there to highlight the fact that all of these assessments that I'm talking about are, are important because um, they can make a difference between you passing the, the course and failing the course or getting a B plus or an A. You know, all those things matter, right? Um, they matter for when you leave this place. Uh, you are competing against everybody else. There has to be a process of weeding out people when let's say you are competing for a certain position, right? One of the things, obvious things they look at is how you performed, right? At, at university. So I would be serious if I were you anyway. Um, so overall, uh, 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 I guess assessment items would be something similar to this, although this was based on 20 quizzes and four, is it four tests or two tests? I can't, I can't remember the final exam really. But you notice that uh, all of these things will amount towards uh, uh, an assessment category weighting here. Um, and then everything uh, is important because it, it gets to, explicitly determine whether or not you will pass the course actually, right? Uh, or how many marks you need for you to pass the course or something, you know? Think about this for a second. I haven't gotten to a stage where I talk about the, uh, the thing here, the, oh, there we go. Might as well go here. Think about this for a second. If we are saying that for you to pass this course, you need to get a minimum of 45%. You need to get between 45% and 100%. I can't get more than 100%. What we are saying here is that, what we are saying here is that if the CA is out of 50, you can pass if you're serious, right? Yeah. 
it's, it's, that's one of the key takeaway points here, right? <laughs> or, although it's, it's not as easy as that, there's this policy or rule uh, which requires that you pass both the CA and the exam for you to pass the course. So even if you get 100% in the CA, if you fail the exam, usually it means you failed the course. This is how it works, right? But, but, but this is important here, right? The, the odds of you getting a good grade are hinged on whether you perform reasonably well in the assessment. And it starts right now, right? Being serious with the course, putting in that extra effort, you know, doing a bit of research if you don't understand a particular concept or topic. All right. Uh, so, I mean, these are the different um, ranges for the different grades and the grade point averages, right? Uh, it turns out there's a minimum grade point uh, that you need for you to, to pass, to graduate, right? So all of these are important things, important metrics, right, that you need to pay particular attention to. Um, and so these are the ranges associated with the different grades also on the grade point averages. A plus is between 90 and 100, A is between 80 and 89, B plus is 70 and 79. Interestingly enough, I think these, these ranges, for those of you that are in the School of Natural Sciences, I was there once upon a time myself, these are different, I think, there. Right? Have you, have you been taught the guys doing maths? Have you not been told uh, what the thing is? Oh, you should ask though. And the ranges, are, they, 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 they're different for different schools. There's some schools where the pass mark is not 45, could be less, maybe more or something, I don't know. I, th I think places like med school or something should be like 50% or something, I don't know. Could be wrong, but we're saying for our school, and specifically for let's dumb it down to this particular program or course, I suppose, because if you say program, you have minors, right? For this particular course, the pass mark is 45%. And these are the other, the, the, the ranges for the other grades. Uh, this, this always comes up, right? I, I don't know what's happening um, in high school these days. People cheating, right? Uh, Academic dishonesty is not tolerated in this course, in the department, in the school, and at UNSA. Uh, very, very soon you'll probably start seeing uh, things on the notice board where they'll tell you that uh, if you cheat in the exam, especially towards the, the exam, if you cheat in the exam, for instance, as an exemplar here, it's an indefinite expulsion. You're never coming back to the UNSA, right? This is how serious academic dishonesty is. And we take it very serious in this course. Um, if you're caught cheating in any way, uh, passing, work done by somebody else as your own, uh, you get a zero in the, in the course. There are people that have gotten zeros in the past. Um, this is a serious thing, right? You want to stay away from this. Work hard and understand and, and, and submit your own work, right? Cheating is bad. There have been instances, I think I know of two cases where students pursuing this very course um, have been expelled and they're never coming back, right? It's very sad. Last year, um, there was somebody who did something very untoward, a third year going into fourth year. Uh, automatically they failed that course, right? It was a course I was uh, coordinating. And I'm saying this so that it sinks in. This is taken very seriously, right? Even more seriously when the course lecturer or the course instructor decides to push this thing um, to, the, to the powers that be, right? The entities that handle these dis disciplinary cases. They want to stay away from this, right? Uh, so academic dishonesty involves you sharing solutions, right? If you're caught, right? Usually there's usually people that are smarter than others and you know you want to be a star or something. You share your solutions with other people. Before you know it, everybody else is submitting your solution, right? You'll be penalized as well, right? So uh, that's academic dishonesty. Uh, coping things, right? You go online and it's, it's so sad. Last year, there's this third year course I was coordinating. People literally copy pasting content online, right? What, you, <laughs> you think people won't figure out that you're, you're doing that, right? Very sad. That's cheating as well, it's plagiarism. It's so stay away from this, you get a zero in the mind. If you get a zero, it's automatically you fail, right? Because I mean, if you, you get 100% in the exam, because you failed the CA, you won't pass the course. I don't know. Um, again, just to emphasize or to underscore the fact that the administration of the course will be done via the Moodle, right? So resources, assessments, 
All the grades are accessible online. Everything is going to be available online. Um, but besides the Moodle, something else we, we use um, often, actually. We make extensive use of uh, UNSA mailing list. We have uh, an ICT 1110 mailing list. Um, the way it works is simple. Once you are added to this group, um, which ideally uh, uh, everyone who's registered will probably be automatically added here. Uh, once you're added to this group, if you have a question, you send the message here. If you have a concern, you send the message here. If you, if you want to share something really exciting related to ICT 1110 to your colleagues, you send your message to here. It's broadcasted to everybody else, right? So I'll give you an example of some of the things that we, I don't know if you can see here, but uh, some of the messages that we had uh, in here, right? Uh, you know, uh, it shows like, I, I got it, uh, an image from before last year, I should have gotten from last year, I guess, but I can show you what sort of conversations we had last year um, so that you, you get an appreciation of why this is important, I suppose, I don't know. But uh, observe. So what we're saying is that um, once you're added to the mailing list and you access the mailing list, um, if a message is sent out, let's say Lycon sends out a message, for instance, say, maybe I'll be late or something, or a reminder that there's an assignment, there's, there's a quiz, all of this is broadcasted via the mailing list, uh, but also notifications via the mood or something, but mostly via the mailing list. Um, what you do is, even though you receive that, that message in your inbox, but you can also access this mailing list using the web interface, right? It's Google Groups. Um, and then you have access to this nice interface. Now the beauty with this mailing list, I mean with this web interface is you gain access to um, dialogues that took place last year and before last year also. This is the fourth cohort and the other year, right? Um, so uh, if, 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 if I can just show you an example here, uh, you will gain access to these things here, right? Uh, Availability this week. The last message was sent on the 31st of, of December here. Uh, someone was asking about quiz two and three not being graded. Uh, you know, a lot of things here. Right? So you can actually go as far back as you notice we have quite a number of uh, conversations, the dialogues that took place. Um, if you feel like, um, like uh, going back in time and getting a sense of, uh, of, of of what sort of conversations we had last year and before last year, uh, you can you can log into the um, to the web interface here, right? Uh, and it's not the thing here is it's not all of these conversations that have to be initiated by the course instructor. This is right? Uh, you can initiate the conversation. Like if you find something interesting, you find a nice tutorial that you feel best explains a certain concept that a number of people are finding difficult. You share it here, right? Now I know, I know, no, we have the WhatsApp group. It's okay, right? But this is nice because this is going to be available forever. Right? I don't know about WhatsApp, but maybe it is. Uh, I guess you can back up things in WhatsApp now. But this is easily searchable also. You can easily search through conversations here. I guess you can search on WhatsApp also. But this is official, right? Uh, I'm not saying don't use WhatsApp. Use whatever you want to use, but um, we use Google Groups, and this is the course ma uh, email address, mailing list address. All right, so if you are curious as to how exactly you get there, if you haven't yet accessed your UNSA mails, very, very soon I'll start sending through um, communication to you, right? Uh, important information will be sent via the mailing list. Uh, for you to access this mailing is quite simple, really. You use your UNSA signed email address, which is your student, uh, oh, your student, uh, ah, okay. Your student, uh, yeah, I don't know. Your student uh, uh, ID at student.unza.zm, right? Um, I'll just cruise through these. I don't have to tell you how to do this. It's quite easy. Just go to uh, uh, google.com, right? And then, so it turns out that the Unza signed an MOU with the Google. So we use um, um, G Suite for education. Um, and using that platform, we have access to different uh, software packages like Google Groups. Um, so our emails are managed by the Google, for instance. 
So this is how you log in, right? Just go to google.com, click on sign in, and then sign in with your user assigned email address. Usually the default password is your student ID. Once you log in, you just reset the password, right? Um, once you get in, gain access to it for the first time, um, you should be able to, to access your emails, right? When you access your emails, uh, when you're able to access your emails, you should also be able to access Google Groups, the web interface I was showing you. You just go to the menu, right? Um, and then you have access to this. It's quite easy. Um, there is a, a screencast that uh, uh, I created last year, some point. Um, I, 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 I don't know why I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, share this, but I'll just say uh, mailing list or something. I don't know if, ah, there we go. So there's this, uh, hasn't been viewed much, but that's okay. For specific tools, uh, oh, six likes. Um, so, so what this does is it helps, it helps, uh, there's this, you can access it on my YouTube channel. It's a walkthrough of how you get to, you get to use or to access your UNSA signed email address, right? If you want to, it's there also. All right, um, where are you going? Oh, okay. All right, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, it's not like uh, I'm saying you should do what we used to do. May I leave the room in primary school? No, 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 I was just trying to joke, so where are you going? You can leave if you want to, right? If you're rushing somewhere, if you're not on campus and you need to get home, you're welcome to leave. So, 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 um, Again, still on course administration and management, uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, I'm the only course, course instructor, course lecturer for this course. Um, they always talk to, uh, to have uh, Mr. Mbewe teach some of the topics. I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but we've, we've almost always wanted that to happen, right? We'll try and see. If that happens, then we'll add him to the list there. Um, if you need to get through to me, uh, that is my email address. You send a message, an email there, right? Um, I work from the fifth floor uh, in room 515. If you wish to come and see me, uh, I'm saying these are tentative office hours uh, because of what's going on. Uh, maybe we can make this ad hoc or something or by appointment only. But nominally, I think I'll be available on Thursdays between 14 and 16 hours if you wish to come and see me. Uh, if these times change, uh, communication will be sent through to you. Um, if, if it turns out that you really, really have to see me, but you're unable to come through on Thursdays between 14 and 16 hours, you can check my calendar for free slots, and then you send me a message, say, uh, I've noticed there's a free slot on maybe Friday at nine hours. Are you available to come and attend to me for A, B, C, D or something? And then, yeah. Uh, there's supposed to be a tutor this year assigned to this course. Uh, those details have not yet been sent through to me, uh, but once, once those details are made available, uh, the tutor will be introduced to you, um, and, and the schedule will be drawn up on when and, and, and how you'll be meeting with the tutor. Um, as far as I know, the timetable, uh, apparently we're supposed to be, we have three slots, right, lectures, we're supposed to be meeting on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So 17 hours uh, to 17.45 on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and then nine to 10 hours on Saturdays. I don't know how I feel about Saturday, but I don't know. Um, we almost always have people that are Adventists, which is why I don't know, I'm saying I don't know how I feel about Saturday, right? Uh, we try to be considerate. Um, it's almost like this timetable is a copy paste. So this problem always pops up and we, we always have to find an alternative slot to move this to a convenient slot um, that everybody is comfortable with. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. But maybe for this week, we shall meet tomorrow and Saturday as well until we come up with a plan. The time is there, nine to 10. It's also, the timetable is there, right? You, how did you find yourselves here? You saw the timetable, right? Yeah, so the same time, this is, I picked this from the timetable myself. So the reason why we're saying we're going to continue with this until Saturday is because 
Because there are people that are doing a number of minors, it's usually difficult to move this to a different day. We, we have to sit down and check. If we decide to move this to Friday, seven hours for instance, is there anybody who's going to be affected? Right? We want to move this to a slot that is not going to inconvenience everybody or anyone, anyone, including myself, right? So, but for now, we will we'll work with this. Um, um, hopefully, once we, we pick on it, uh, a, a class representatives, maybe we can, we can try and negotiate for an alternative slot. Uh, yeah, so in terms of what we're doing right this year, again, same as last year, before last year and the other year, the plan is we cover the computer systems component in term one. It's what we call a top-down approach or something. If, if, if we didn't have this confusion, we would have done the opposite beginning this year to see if, if maybe the experience, the learning experience would be somewhat better or bearable. Um, but we, we're doing the same thing this year. We start with the computer systems component in term one, and then we transition to the computer architecture component in term two. Um, I thought I'd put this up here to remind us that uh, this so-called face-to-face interaction is only up to April somewhere there, right? Uh, so, yeah. All right, I, I don't know if there are any uh, questions so far. Everything is clear, right? Uh, usually, I mean, this is uh, very clear, I suppose. Uh, listen, uh, we, we, we normally do this every year. Uh, we really, really need your help here. Um, please. Find time and go to this URL and fill out this um, student information survey. It's a very short survey. Um, we normally collect information about, about you. Um, it's mostly demographic details about yourself. Um, so if you could please find time and go there. This you can even do on your mobile device, right? So there's no excuse here. If you could do this, maybe after class, that would be really nice. We'd really appreciate this. Uh, it's an easy to follow questionnaire. Uh, it's not an exam, it's not an assessment, you won't be penalized for anything. Just fill in the blanks, I suppose. Uh, before we part ways here, uh, uh, I wanted to, to suggest that uh, maybe we can do this tomorrow, right? Tomorrow before we transition to looking at uh, the course introduction, um, I, will, uh, I will invite people to, to um, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's almost more than an hour. We can, we can do this tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow, before you transition to the course introduction, I will uh, invite uh, people to to volunteer to be course, not class, but course, ICT 1110 course representatives. Bad things happen. Sometimes you need clarification. Uh, you can't have everybody come through to room 515 you have the representative, right? Especially if it's a serious thing that you need addressed. Um, you go through the course representatives. We normally have two of them, one female, one male. Um, and this is voluntary work, obviously, but it's always nice to do some of these things, right? So tomorrow, uh, if you are interested, you can volunteer maybe tomorrow we can, uh, let's do this, right? It won't take long. Who wants to, can, I, can we have uh, volunteers uh, for one male and one female, for ICT 1110 course representative? All right. I don't know if I'm getting old, but these this seats, they, they seem, uh, this is, these are not nice, right? This, I don't know. All right, just give me a second. Let's uh, see if we can. Uh... All right, so uh, can I have names? Sorry? Noah? No. What do you spell no? Is it like them? Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. No. Okay. 
Who else for the males? Yes, your name? Okay, who else for the males? Volunteers? What's your name? Sorry? Pasco who? Piela. Okay. Piela, okay. All right, for the females, volunteers. The, the reason we do this is sometimes people feel comfortable going through their own genders, right? So if, if we mark an assessment, you have to, the, the things are given to the course representatives, right? All those small little things. We need a female representative. No one is volunteering. Are the females? Uh... The math major, can I put your name here? OK. So your name, thank you. Sorry? All right, okay. We don't need to vote for the female then. For the males, uh, we need one, I suppose. Maybe you can, there has to be a vote, I guess, I don't know. So, maybe just in 20 seconds, right? We'll start with Noel. Maybe you want to tell the guys why, why uh, you want to be course representative. Sorry? Sorry? Well, you probably want to stand so that they see you, I guess. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jacob, do you want to? Sorry? Thank you. All right, uh, Pascal. Um, for me, the reason why I want to stand for because I have an interest in learning more about IT. And the second thing is that I really like, like to interact and socialize with my fellow classmates. So I'm sure I will be interacting with my the last thing is that I think when I'm selected as, selected as a representative, I'm sure most of the time I'll be interacting with the staff in that for every information that they are shared to me, I'll be able to share with the other guys so that we can be most, most of the time spending interacting about good stuff. All right, thanks. That's good. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering. Can we just ask that you give us maybe uh, maybe just 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then the people will have to choose the three. There's only one female, so no need to vote. I suppose everybody's just voted for her, even if you didn't want to vote because it's only one person. But we need to choose one person here. So, so if, if I know Jacob and Pasco, if you just step out just for a minute and then, and then we're almost done. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're coming back though. You want to go? Where is he going? Why is he going? Um, I, th I, th I think Jacob has very important things in his bag or something. I don't know.
Um, so you only vote once, right? Uh, raise up your hand if you are, you are for no. Uh, way up, way up if, if you are, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, raise up your hand if you are for Jacob. <laughs> All right, uh, raise up your hand if you are for Pasco. Let's go. <laughs> All right, suppose it's, it's settled then. I need to mask out the recording, right? Not that it's any bad or something, but uh, all right. Thank you, come in. Oh, why is this open? Do you know? No. What's that? Is that the restroom or something? No. Sorry? Yeah. Oh, why, is, why is it open? <laughs> it looks like there's water in there. All right, uh, so I'll see you tomorrow. So uh, it appears people want to know to Represent them and Nancy. All right. So, see you tomorrow, uh, same time, same venue. Thanks. Oh, by the way, uh, so excuse me. The um, so before you leave the. The, um, excuse me, do you mind? The, the, Moodle, the Moodle also has uh, this, this document, it's the syllabus. Uh, uh, you will find this on the Moodle, right? So you can download this together with the companion slides from today, if you want. It's going to be on the Moodle, it's on the Moodle. All right, thank you. Sorry? No. We don't use, I don't use WhatsApp. The, the things are shared via Moodle and, uh, and the course mailing list. If you, want, if you want things shared via WhatsApp, you should tell your, your course representatives to be doing if they, they are willing to do that. But, but, but they'll be available on the Moodle. Yeah. Thank you. See you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Tomorrow. Cool.